How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games, and today I bring you a not never top five video, and this one is top five red decks I feel would be great in the competitive format. If on the next list update we get a hit in some way, shape, or form to SS4 Gogeta and Red Sin, because since their release, those two decks have been dominating the meta and dominating the color, like in general, like just. Like we've seen before with blue and yellow, when one deck is just the strongest one for that color. We've seen that for red, where just these two red decks, there's no point completely running any other red deck at a higher level of them, when those two always do something better or are a lot stronger than those other ones. And not only that, by dominating their entire color, so it's pointless playing anything competitively in that color that isn't them. With ever, even with any other deck, you've got to think about when you play competitively, how your deck's going to deal with those, and or even just trying to see if you can find a deck that can counter them very well, but then having a broad format with a broad range for the rest of the decks in the format. And that's why we got this top five because there, there are some ever red red decks that are actually pretty decent, and even got some new ones coming out. But then with those decks in the format, like is there any point in running it? Not really. But uh, so I'm going to go over my top five. And before we get into the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel out greatly. We're on our way to a thousand subs. And we're hoping to get there by the end of the year. Currently coming out at two thirds with a giveaway that just um giveaway video that just happened in the last month as we got to six hundred. And we're even then almost seven hundred. And if you want to check out if you won the giveaway, if you entered it and see if you won it, go check out the video. And also if you want to get notified when my videos do drop, go ahead and click the notification bell. So let's have a look and see what my top five picks are. So start off with the first one. We will go off in the in, like uh, from newer to older with the red decks, and let's start off with one of the new ones that's coming out, and that is the Parapole Goku deck. And I know people have already been trying to figure out decks like names for it because given it's a Goku deck, people would try and give really terrible coup names to it, like uh, we've seen with things like Drip Coup. Like, it makes sense with these uh, Goku names, like the Ku names, because they're meant to be there to identify a specific leader. Like, identify it so you can, when you say the name, you, you like, know who it is. Like, we've had one for Helku being the Go the yellow Goku from the Android 17 arc, when he's in Hell, went back from Hell, he's actually got Hell in the name. So when you see Hel Helku, you think about that one. And then we've got things like Drupku, who have nothing really to do with it, just a terrible name someone gave it, and then it just happened to stick, because these terrible names do. Like, so many work games I've seen already that have got Pole Coup, Power Coup, Stripper Coup, things like that, and it's just hope that none of them kick off and um, stick with it. But uh, but now, Power Pole Goku is a pretty strong one. Uh, we do have some, I do have some uh, points about why I feel this is going to be one of the top five. Because it has strong consistency and troll power, because it's got an alternative awakening, which is nice to see on decks. Um, it also has very good draw power as well, in that both sides of the leader you draw one when you attack. And you also got extra draw through the power pole, which is like a key factor for like how the deck works. And a lot of consistency in like the little um, cantrips it's got, like you've got the two searches, like every deck's normally got, which is um, when it draws and when that searches. And those add to the self awakening as well. And most of the Gokus that you can play to put the uh, power pole underneath it have a f effect where I have such a federal pole, searching, drawing, and provides some great pressure. And also that, and also not only that, it also has, since it's a Red Saiyan card, since it's a Red Saiyan leader, it has all the good Red Saiyan tools as well. Like we've seen that with the, the S4 Kogita, not only does it have his own archetype, but it has got some very good cards that work well with Red Saiyans. Like Red Saiyans are very good at like a nice little, uh, little package of tools that they can have like imposing presence from that even with the Vegeta secret rare as well which is very handy and speaking of secret rares it also has a flex flexibility in what secret rare tool secret rare options it has so you've got the SS4 SS4 Vegito secret rare which is a very good secret rare that currently uh, mainly SS4 Vegeta runs this is a red same you can have that just to give you a nice a nice little bit of pressure hand knowledge and make it a very very better, a lot, a very easier defensive turn after that as well, which also ties well with his boss card as well. And you also got the new one coming out, being the Shenron, which is a very good option for it as well. You got the Vegeta as well. Then you got other options in black, where you don't need ones of specified costs like Pan and uh, Kai and stuff. You know that I've been using that much. It's a very good one, even cooler if you want to go for that. 
and it's also got like we've seen with most decks in this format now like a boss cards like boss cards are normally a big thing about most archetypes going into the well since we've had the unison force uh unison warrior series really where every deck's got a great like a really good boss card and this one has a great boss card that provides both great offense and defense in the piccolo and gohan because when it comes down, it gives you a leader 5k boost, meaning you're 5, uh, 20kn offensively and also defensively, which is very good as we've seen with all the Z leads and ever leads that can go up to 20k and defend a lot easier as of that fact. And incorporating that with imposing presence means you can have a very good defensive turn where you basically just skip your opponent's turn for them trying to kill you and then yeah, just go to your next turn. And it's very easy to pull off as well. And given that all that fact with the trust draw power from uh, Kiku, red tools and stuff, I think if these the two top decks get two top red decks get hit, this could be a very good like a very good red deck for the format. And then that brings us since we're going from old uh, newest to oldest, brings us to the next one being the Gothic deck. So both the two new ones I feel are very good red decks. And this one's really nice in that it's the second ever Red Wish deck and also the second ever Garlic deck as well. So Red Wish is something we haven't had uh, since set 5, so a good 16 sets ago. And Garlic being a, never, a character who hasn't had a second lead since uh, set 11, so a good, good, good while ago for both those. And nice thing they got brought together into one because Garlic is one of the few... Um, leaders, just like Zamasu, actually fulfilled their actual wish that they wanted to perform, which is immortality. And it's nice that we got bring that brings in with a lot of things as well. So, with some points about why I feel this could be one of the top five red decks, is that it's just like with the other one, strong consistency and draw power because of its um, wish and desire mechanic. So, wish is very good in the fact that in order to flip over, you need to perform your wish, which is getting seven dragonables into your drop and you normally have ways to search them and good thing about this the benefit of that of wish mechanics is that when you look for the balls sometimes you can have them in life and deck or you could have them both and you get the added benefit of being able to know what's in your life by when you look for the balls looking in your life you can see exactly what's in your life to know if it's something you can dig for in there or what potentially if you take damage what you potentially get out of there which most decks don't have. Most decks don't get to look at their life and have that knowledge of what's in there, but which decks do, so that's one big benefit. And also the fact that it has to play with seven balls and it doesn't look like so far, because we haven't seen the TPs yet, because I feel you normally see the TPs after the set's been, main set's been done. We haven't seen if there's any special Dragon Ball. In the main set, there's no special Dragon Ball like Smasso had. So we're going to assume that this deck's going to have to use the normal Dragon Balls, but at least then, there's simply just zero cost extra cards that just draw the card. So let's see, thinning your deck fight quite quickly. Which is very nice for the desire mechanics and also with desire mechanic as well it's a really good one in the fact that it can draw you two cards a turn because when you use the um when you use desire card for this deck if you you give you draw one from the desire and you give one of your garlics indestructible and then if you use it for free off the leader's effect you get a draw never card so essentially plussing one and filling through and normally most of the times when you activate a desire off of the wish deck you don't normally get that benefit of um plusing off it it's just before it's just for free but being a fall off this effect but with this you're actually getting draw power as well in plusing from that and it also has a good utility package because with most red decks as well we um it has a strong usage of the unison package because before we had that before we had the current one being s4 Gogeta, we had the piccolo jr one which is a very strong one but since it got limited and then we got the new Gogeta one. That's been a mainstay in it, which is how strong it is. By just when it comes down, look at top three cards and grab any red card among them to your hand. And also, then be on the play uh, plus one to play out one drops for free. And then having a way to be a good finisher with its minus effect. And considering that with the lead um, and the whole structure of it, you play a lot. Of, you could play one drops off the leads effect and stuff to help find the um, find your balls because the leader isn't. Have anything to do with finding balls he's got his minions his henchmen to come in and do that for him and there are one drops to one that helps find the balls so this is great with the units package be able to drop that down play one off the lead to help find more ball more balls and also then go ahead and play one off the units as well to play whenever one drop to help find your balls in your deck or in your life as well so that gives that actually utility and then with a units package you also access to yamcha things like wolf fist as well to be a little bit more defensive and even take 
eight take attacks away from your lead to it because your opponent's going to be scared that it's going to get too many markers and give you some resources. So not only be able to keep you alive but also and help you fulfill uh, your conditions to so help to flip the flip over and wish. You also get as a kind of deep like a um, diversion from being killed essentially, which is very good. And you also have flexible secret route options, just like with the um, everyone. You don't have just unlike with the power pole Goku. You don't have access to the Vegito Zeno secret rare, because that's only for Red Saiyans. But you still have the same thing if you've got more options now in red. Be like the Shenron, the, the Vegeta, even got some black ones as well, like Cooler if you wanted to. So very good secret rare options, so it's not always guaranteed there's going to be a specific one that's made for the deck, like needs to be run in the deck, but some good options for it. And you also got a great boss card in providing incredible defense, because... The boss card of this deck is the 8-drop garlic, which when it comes down, minuses your opponent's, uh, all your opponent's battle, well, all battle cards on the board by 15k power. It also has a permanent where white has got um, indestructible, which your desire can give it. You give all your opponent's card, battle cards and unison cards, minus 10k power, and because that effect doesn't choose, it gets through barrier, meaning when it comes down it's getting everything 25k or less. I'm not sure if you're in barrier because I can't remember exactly if the... Uh, on play effects, the minus stuff gives it goes for barrier, but still minus things for 25k, and then be able to chunk through units is a lot easier, make it harder for your opponent to kill you by being minus 10 like outside the leader. That everything they play is minus 10k unless that go cheater, but then this is the one if uh, having your board minus 10k for the turn, like want well, to try and kill you, makes it free able makes you able to defend yourself a lot better, and even though it's not permanent. To like state that you can't keep the battle card around forever it goes it gets removed from the game at the end of your opponent's turn you can still drop it turn after turn they get that incredible defense so it has some very good options with that deck as well and then we move on to the third one and that is android 13. so this is a very nice one in that it's an android very good one uh, we don't have many Red Androids. I think this is the first. Re I think this might be the first Red Android deck we've got. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it's nice. Like Androids seem to be doing very good at this format, uh, mainly because they're in blue, and mainly because all the blue Android stuff. It's got defensively for like between Gamma Android Twenty One and stuff like that. Just those bit like bits together is the only way how blues really like defend itself because the better tools are in those decks. And they're not really just blue decks, they're more multicolored decks where they have blue and green. So essentially two they're not really blue, they're two colours in one. And while well, making use of the, the best aspects of green with the best aspects of blue, is how it's surviving. But there is a Never Android deck that is doing quite well. And well that can do quite well, and that's Android 13. So for this deck, it has a nice alternative awakening and also has fantastic consistency because the one drops that you need to uh, awaken alternatively. They both search each other so you get that deck uh, ability to just search for your deck to find them. And as well, m m almost everything searches you. A leader that searches by resting itself just to get advantage from your deck. You've got one drops that search each other to help thin your deck. The unison, most of the things, and you've even got um, everything's like old support that also helps thin your deck as well. So you can chunk through your deck quite quickly. And the alternative awakening is very simple in that you just need to, in your on your board or in your drop a one drop red Android 14 and a red drop one uh, red one drop Android 15 as well, and that's very easy to do since they both search each other. And you get that done by turn two, and then flip over, sit yourself down to six, and there you go, you flipped over awakened. Very nice, uh, very nice thing to do. Then you can start getting advantage by swing with your leader as well because you do switch yourself to active mode after doing that, so you get benefits of both sides of your leader. And it has very easy access to your Z lead and also to additional support. And by alt support, I mean the Android 14 Stoic Fist from Set 9 and the Android Troops for the Anniversary Box as well. So, Android Troops is a green card and it's essentially a, if you ever played Yu Gi Oh! It's an upside goblin or just a, a, a cantrip that doesn't require any energy, just discard from your hand. Because all it, does, all it says is there's a green 2 cost. Um, if your leader is an Android 13, discard it from your hand to draw 1. So since you're in your hand, discard it, draw one, put you through your deck, and the great thing about that is putting is the card is both a cat is Android 14 and 15. Uh, so helping with some like union absorb shenanigans with the big boss card. And also finish your deck through as well. 
to vary. It's, like, it's a bit off color, but it's fine because you're just going to use it to describe it from your hand, draw one, splat, and then it's captures both names. And then stuck this nice one to help you take your life down and manage your life how you want to. So like if you get against matchups where you get stored up where you, they won't want to attack you to help you get to your Z lead. You have that as well, just discard it, plus an Android 15 to help take some of your life down, draw a card to replace itself as well, and then also make your opponent discard one. It's a bit of hand control in it as well, if you wanted to go that route. Well, I'll try to go that route anyway. And that is is really helpful because your Z lead needs you to be at 4 less life. So having that card there to help you put yourself down to 4 if your opponent won't do it for you. So you can go into your Z lead, gives you access to that quite quickly. And speaking of the Z lead, it also can provide some nice defense with a 5k boost for the turn because it's got an effect on the Z lead where, well, now you access the Z lead when you play those one drops, one drop under 14 and 15s, they now have the ever option, which is to draw a card before when you're on your normal awaken side, it is just search the everyone. But when you're a Z lead, you have the option then just draw a card instead. So instead of searching for the everyone, which you can run out of, you now have the option to just draw a card. And also, as the effect I was trying to say, is the effect of the Z lead has an activate battle, which is by sending from your Z energy, which you can amass a massive amount of Z lead very quickly, very easily with this deck, which is very nice. So you can mass a lot of it, and it's not just there for show, you can make use of it by sending an Android 14, Android 15, Android 13 from your Z energy to drop. You can draw a card, so extra draw power, so get more cards. You also gain a f uh, 5k boost for the turn and double strike. So offensively, you make yourself a 20, 20, uh, 20k base double strike. So if you want to be aggressive, you can do that. I'm drawing a card. And defensively, you draw a card as well to give you more resources, uh, like more combat power potentially, and more ways to defend yourself. And also give you 5k pace, 5k power, which is for the turn. And then, yeah, of course, the double strike doesn't matter when you're defending yourself. But yeah, it's a nice, nice, nice utility being able to combo out of cards, get that uh, Z energy there, and make use of it to make it easier, easier for you to defend yourself or be more offensive, which is very good. And it's got a great boss card, it's got great boss cards providing a very strong push, because it's got the one drop hand of 13, which just for one energy to use a union sword, absorbing a 14, 15 from your drop, you get to go into any seven drop Android 13. And there are a fair few of it, there's the old green ones from back when Android 13 was first made in, I think, set three. You got some of those ones, which are not amazing, but they're all right. Then you've got the multicolor one from set 9, which gives you a bit of hand control as well, and recycle some of your androids when you drop too. You've got the blue one that came with the gamma stuff as well, which I can't remember if it was very good, but it's, that's an option. And also you have your new one that actually gives a deck, the red one, which can provide you a lot of pressure. Because the union absorb isn't once per turn, so when you come to your kill, to, uh, like the turn of being able to drop it, actually use it to go, in, go into your 7 drops, you can actually drop 2 per turn, and with the Villainous villain, you can actually get four to five swings with your Android 21 713s as well, which is very, very, very strong. So you can put in a very good push. And you've also got some secret, good secret rares for the deck as well to help make use of it. Some you can play for free, like Pan, or if one you want to go for more of a burn, like uh, most red decks do, you have the Vegeta as well. So I feel like this could be a very good one, and that's my reasons why. Then we go to the next one, probably one of my favorites, and that is Vegito, because this one is, is a leader that didn't come out until set two, and it was, it's been getting support over the years, bit by bit, to make it better, but yeah, no matter what brand I brought out for it, it was never, never good. Like, it has some nice cards for it, but no good way to put it together. Then the Zenkai series triggered, and started, and brought a lot of, uh, like new ways to kind of support older leaders like with z with the z deck stuff like z deck support even z battle cards z deck uh, z leader or soon we'll have z extras and this one 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 this is one of the ones who got like a ton of support and that's because of the amazing z leader it got and also z battle card to help support it along with the other bits of support that actually bring it together now and with this one it's got an incredible consistency with the z deck support being that You've got an away tool, like before with the lead, it was just one of the very, very old ones where it would be a four or less life to draw two and flip over. So you had to put it to same, you had no self waking on the lead, no real draw power on the front, and then minimal draw power on the back, but just swinging a draw card. So a very, very, very bad leader. But thanks to the Z deck with the Z battle card, you're able to bring it out and make, make it so you're guaranteed to awaken 
turn two now with the deck. Flip over and also still draw the two cards. So flip over a higher life total and not have to wait to get down the fortress to flip over. And also then, once you're on your uh, leader, you can then go into your Z leader, which is a very uh, very strong leader, being giving yourself base uh, double strike as well to help chunk away at unisons by just swing with the leader to get at least two markers off. Keeping the permanent to keep all your Goku and Vegeta's all um, treated as blue, red, and green. So help you go like a more multicolor deck. Um, and then an activate main to help play, like, play out some big boss cards and also battery removal put in. So that brings us into the second point straight away. That it has battery removal built into the Z leader and has red Saiyan leader support. So just like the power pole Goku deck. This deck also has any kind of the support that would go well with a red Saiyan because it itself is a red Saiyan. So things like opposing it can also have. It can also have the um, the Vegito secret bar. And yes, yeah, so it's got all that bit of support as long as like barrier removal is the main thing. Like even though it's just bounced back the hand barrier, sometimes when your opponent establishes something with barrier, it's not really going to cost one or three. It's only going to cost some energy. And if you've got to bounce it back to hand, you have to try and replay it. And sometimes if it's quite difficult to replay it, it's going to cost them even more resources to try and get back out where you just bounce it back for free. And anything that's like a secret rare or a Z battle card, then you get to remove that for free. And it's gone for the good. So it's very nice in that. And it's got very strong he's got very strong, strong secret rare options and boss cards which are all cheap. So you've got very good boss cards in that you can play out the eight drop like eight drop Vegitos. You've got some very good choices in there, like mainly the one from set ten, the big blue one, the strip strike and barrier, with the fleck too. You have those ones which you can drop out from just for for just free. Yeah, on top of one of your Vegito Z battle cards, which is very good. So you can drop out for for like literally one energy, you can get a big 35k triple strike with barrier, put some pressure on, and if it's not removed, it's just there again next turn, and you just go over and over again once per turn every turn. You also got the good secret options by average. If you want to go the more mono red route, like just focus on more just the red good stuff. You have the the what's it called? The Vegito Z, Vegito Zeno secret where you can drop in this, giving yourself a big 25k base double strike leader to have pressure on that turn along with your quad striking secret red to help to look at your opponent's hand and have that for offense and defense which is very good and also you also you also have the one that's more specific for this leader being the power patar an old leader from an old secret rare from set seven which you can drop for for one as well just like you would do um vegeto eight drop and that one allows you to like keep, just keep your hand back up also tap your opponent out as well but just tapping down any any four cards that you have and they be able to push through some pressure as well, like go for like a more oppre like oppressive kill turn a bit earlier, which is very good. So you have those two very strong op options. And since you're also a red Z leader as well, you have access to the red Sin A drop. So if that doesn't get banned or removed in some way or is heavily heavily errated, you have that access to this uh, deck as well. This drop because you're one of the few red Z leaders in the game. So you got that nice benefit. And also, it allows you to, this deck not only allows you to have the good red stuff, you also have access to other color support due to the leaders permanent. Be able to make your Gokus and Vegeta's in all areas, red, blue, and green. And if you put in some yellow ones, well, to give them all four colors then. If you have a yellow one, it has it, it maintains its original color, plus its free extra color. So while it's not a multicolor, because it's, it's still the color always looks at the original cost, uh, when you when it's, something specifies a certain color, you can get access to all different like different color support like things like dirty burst and uh, stuff like that by having Goku's Vegeta's which is the main core part to go with your Pataras so that's very very cool in that aspect and even then you don't have to even run Goku's and Vegeta's in this deck you can just focus on you can, you can just have the Vegito Z battle card in the deck just to play those eight drops and then go for good red red stuff it's very it's like it's very first top leader which I very really like and that is my fourth bit and then we're going to go on to the last pick, and people are probably looking at this thinking, where is the Set 6 Gogeta one, like the when the people call the Exodia deck, because even though it's not Exodia, it doesn't win through drawing a perfect 5 cards. It's uh, just a very oppressive, um, very oppressive red deck. Then again, that's not really a red deck, it's more of like an act, it's more, it's not, well it is a red deck, it's not really how like a, a normal red deck, it's just a very insanely aggro, high roll red deck, uh, aggro deck, not really... A red deck is just an aggro deck. That's just really high roll. You really glue this in because it's not that consistent. And it's one of those things that can catch people off card. But if it's always seen, it's less likely to do well. And 
and you're probably thinking about why are things like um it could it be something like Bulma, could it be something like Pan? Pan's like one of those ones that doesn't really have a big finish, it's just like a very bland to the ground, like just good stuff red deck, which is a bit isn't that interesting, doesn't have that like um flair that all these other decks have. And then you've got Bulma, which is it's not played that often, even though it's a very strong deck, it's not played that often and it is um it's also not very interesting to play or play against either. So it's not like a so I, I, a lot of people go by like what characters and stuff like that. But um if you do want to have a look at what my fifth pick fifth pick is, this is what it is, and it is Red Beera. So from the same set as Bulma being set eight, an old one, this is what I would feel is be a very good red um red contender as well. Because I've been trying it out play it myself, I've had a lot of fun with it. And it's got some nice little benefits to it as well. So it has great draw power using the leader unison and offering as well. So one thing I found is that on just on the front side you can get a lot of advantage by just discarding a red or yellow card, the draw two. And most of the time when you're discarding a card for that effect, you put you put something in the drop that actually gets a benefit of being in the drop. Like um, a Goku or even the Whis that came out of support of it. Like this deck has been also and everyone has been getting a bit of support, but like Vegito is actually got a good leader and stuff. That's not just that doesn't need like a Z leader or anything. It's actually got a good leader to start off with. It's just getting a bit more uh, bits of support, and it's also a multicolor deck as well. It can make use of multicolor to have the best of two colors, like we've seen with the Android ones. And it's also got great options for unison. Like red is generally a color that has very good unison options, and you have got one of the best ones being the baby unison for this as well, which is very good. Which also has more troll power. Uh, very sticky one as well, being a survive very well to keep around the board and it's offering a very very powerful keyword that is limited to red yellow and we haven't had much of it as well like most of the keywords for some of the colors some are strong in others and offering is one that's not as weak as say other colors like revive and stuff like that but it's not as strong as say things like aegis and stuff but it's still a very strong one it's got some nice little tools to make use of that offering which is also a way either to make your opponent crit a life or draw two or let you draw two so it's very very good and it's got very strong arrival options, like you've got the different kinds of Beerus, you've got the new Beerus that comes down, that um, can also be a free multicolor as well if you don't use your leader or can't use your leader's ability on your awaken, uh, on your unawakened side. And also comes down, has the offering and also can lock your opponent's battle cards for less down by just be attack attacking. You've got the other one that could come down and minus two things through... Um, so minus two things for 10k and draw your card and also act as a potential triple strike finisher if need be and you've even got the old one that came out with this deck the five drop one which is a very strong ability to either pop something 30 care less with with this being red and having that power reduction ability you can make your opponent uh, a card on your opponent's board a battle card mainly down to 30k so that you can pop it with that effect and you also have the other option to lock down cards, so like choose your opponent's leader what's in rest mode and make it so it can't restand, so it stays there unable to attack or even to restand or anything, which is great. And yeah, it also has access to multicolor support as well and all its tools, so it has the best of both worlds in that it's both red and yellow, so you have some good, so some, you have access to some good yellow cards, access to some good red cards, and also access to good multicolor things like all my resistance is a very good counter counter that. Now she's to push through very easily with this deck to like push through a big swing if you want to go for a kill swing push it through even if your opponent tries to stop you and other things as well in multicolor formats and also a very good super combo in the multicolor as well being the beer super combo which is one of the few multicolor super combos that allows you to draw as well most multicolor uh, super combos don't give you the benefit of drawing like like most super combos do like the benefit is that they're free 10ks at draw but um, have a different way to either affect your opponent or just don't gain you advantage, just give you a niche little thing. And this is the one, one of the few, I think one of the only super combos that actually allows you to draw without any access support. And it also has access to a very strong Z deck with more choices than most decks. Because where it's both a red, it's a multicolor deck playing both red and yellow, you have access to all the red, different red um, Z cards, Z battle cards, and also access to some of the, all the good yellow ones as well. So like you've got a four of things like you've got the Vegeta Z battle card just for life awakening, good red ones in like the SS4 Goku De uh, Defender of Life, the SSB Vegeta one, the um, Android 17 one as well for a blocker, uh, dual blocker, 
And you've also got things like Oolong, SP Goku, the Vegeta Z Battle Cry that pops through Barry. You've got all those nice little techs in the Z deck that have very strong options to give you, allow like making building your Z deck very challenging to include what you want to include and what you want to have more copies, or if you just want one of each, all that access to it as well. And that brings us to end of the video. So those are five my my five top picks for red. If Sin and Goji to get hit, let me know down in the comments section if you agree with this, what your opinions are, like if you think there's ever ones that are better, if you agree or not. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.